uh, a few weeks ago. Now, I know that the macro situation could change your perspective. Has your perspective changed based on the inflation numbers and other macro factors, no. or you still stand? No, okay. you still have you still have guys that bought JPEGs for a lot of money with the value still there. You still have a 33% discount on Grayscale Bitcoin, which usually trades at a 20% premium, which means it's half off. You still have 140,000 coins that will come out of Mt. Gox. You still have 70,000 coins that the Department of Justice will probably sell instead of giving back to Bitfinex. We'll see. You still have got, who knows, in between probably 50 or 300,000 coins sitting with Ross Ulbricht, which will probably get sold by the U.S. Marshals. You've got tons of sell pressure, tons of discount, and a relief bounce. You've got a dead cat bounce. And you could go look back in the chart and see a lot of other bounces. And this doesn't stop until everyone's liquidated and everyone is washed out and they finally sell the bottom and they finally capitulate and then you can go back up. We just now had Hotbit close their website and close their withdrawals because, well, they're probably insolvent is my guess, like so many other people are insolvent. And as the bear market runs a little bit longer, usually our last bear market lasted a year, this time it's extended, it's longer because they bought a fake double top on margin, which liquidated three hours capital, which had El Salvador down, which had now sailors down a billion or two billion and no longer CEO of his own company any longer. All these scumbags that told you it was only going up forever need to get washed out and sell the bottom. Then we can actually go back up. So I think this is a relief rally. I think you might have a buy the rumor, sell the news event on the merge in Ethereum. I think that that merge will release a ton of uh, staked Ethereum. I think something like 10% of the total Ethereum supply is in staked Ethereum, which only releases when ETH 2.0 launches. I think that's a huge sell pressure. So, you know, it's all fun and games. Enjoy the bounce. I like Greek handles as much as the next guy. Hopefully things can decorrelate. Like, you know, Hex is up twice in the, uh, the last few weeks. I, you know, we went up 60x versus Bitcoin from my first 55% uh, dip that Bitcoin did. So when it went from 65K down to 17K, it, uh, or down to whatever, whatever 55% dip was on its first dip, you know, Hex went up 60x versus it. It's still up 250x versus it. I don't know why anyone even bothers talking about it when everything outperforms it, including Dogecoin. Literally everything outperforms Bitcoin. I don't know why anyone bothers talking about it. It's, gar it's garbage. Like you, you, if you buy that to try and make money, you ain't going to make money. So, so going back to the, to the crypto, uh, you know, just crypto in general, a general belief is that when the market is, is improving, is going up, when there's bad news, it's generally a bullish sentiment in the markets and vice versa. When the market is dropping, even though there's, there's good news, generally that's, that's an indicator of a bearish market. Do you think that the buying power from a change of sentiment could make up, you know, events such as the, the, the Department of Justice coins, you know, Mt. Gox coins, Ross Aldrich, there, you know, you could, I wouldn't be surprised if there's enough buying power. If we're in a bull market, there will be enough buying power to absorb these sales. No. Do you think there is a possibility you that... Have, you wouldn't have a 33% discount on Grayscale Bitcoin, which holds 3% of all Bitcoin. They make $600 million a year selling 2% of their portfolio for fees every year. The amount of like actual retail money that goes into Grayscale is everything. We went up on Grayscale in the Coinbase IPO. We went down the minute the Coinbase IPO happened. They started liquidating their Grayscale positions early, which is why you saw the premium disappear and go into negatives or, or go into baseline just before the IPO. And so I called the top on the day. That top call was in profit every single day for over a year and a half now, except for one day, the Judas Candle, the 6% weak limp dick higher high from 65 to 69K. Then it went straight down after. Everyone's excited thinking that there's a new bear market. But guess what, guys? It was 65K when I called the top a year and a half ago. And Bitcoin is roughly the same price now it was five years ago. Its performance is pitiful. It's buggy software. Its developers are leaving left and right. Even the douche that was on the, uh, the last show with us, Muneeb, or whatever his name is, even he's begging and crying to try and keep Bitcoin devs developing on Bitcoin because they want to leave because this community is so toxic. Bitcoin devs are literally leaving Bitcoin development because the community sucks so bad. Uh, so, Tone, in terms of the grayscale discount, what's your right, take hey, on that Mario, indicator? Mario, I'm, I'm, ahead, happy to I'm happy to explain how grayscale works, but I'm going to jump off spaces. When Richard Hart leaves, I'm happy to come back. Uh, he's too much of a scammer. I can't be in here. I'm not giving him the stage anymore. I debated him last time. Uh, so when he's done, feel free to text me. I'm happy to come back. Later, guys. No, understood, man. Uh, do you want to touch on the grayscale um, uh, discount first? Oh, he's jumped off. 
Look, Tim and- is a coward. He says things that aren't true. He called the Bitcoin top at 7K before it went to 20K. He got liquidated on the only position he put on BitMEX before they canceled his affiliate account. He shows ref links and trading programs. You could buy a coin to get rich and change your life. Instead, you give him money to teach. He teaches you how to lose money. It's disgusting. He's so, the worst person in this space. It's getting people to lose all their money trading, the most dangerous thing you can do in this business. And he says Richard, evil, terrible, cool. wrong things about the actual innovation, which is Ethereum and other things. So and going, by the way, back to the- Bitcoin, Bitcoin's not correlated with the dollar. It's correlated with the stock market. He was completely wrong about that as well. He just comes on here and says a bunch of wrong stuff with a confident tone. Uh, Richard, just going back to the market uh, sentiment right now, do you do you think there is, a, is there any macro indicators that could change your, your expectations on the market yeah, over the next sure. few months? If you start printing money again for a laugh, then you'll go up against the dollar, but the dollar will go down against real world things. So you'll be up on paper versus the dollar, but you'll be even or down versus real stuff, which is what you really care about. Cool. You went up. Okay. Bitcoin is roughly the same price from five years ago, but is stuff the same price as five years ago? No stuff costs twice as much. So you're really down half. So being even over five years means you're down versus the real world. And it's farther, Mark, with this scumbag that charges paid programs and paid groups that didn't call the top of the day, like I did, that gets all his followers wrecked, which is why they're not uh, in my threads bragging before, about their gains. Uh, before, before, before we go back, I know, I know you, you and Tom have a lot of disagreements. Just going back to the market, um, you also touched on the NFT market as well, and uh, you still think they're overpriced. We did have a big discussion about it a few weeks ago. I think that was one of the best discussions we've had in this space. We hit record numbers when we talked about your take and other, other people's take on NFTs. I think you and Tone actually agreed on a lot of points there. Um, do you still think the NFT market after the correction we've just had is still inflated? We, we had a 90%, so, so 95% correction. NFTs are like games. People get bored of games. StarCraft used to be awesome. I used to play a lot of StarCraft. But then StarCraft 2 came out. People stopped playing it. Then StarCraft 2 was okay for a while. But then they got bored of it. So now everyone plays Dota and League of Legends and a lot of other stuff. And so... People are used to getting bored of games and they move on. That's why boring things like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, like Hex, that just have a very simple single function that they perform are unlikely for people to get bored of them because they serve a purpose. But any of these hype, you know, I I buy this thing because it lets me talk to other people. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound capital efficient to me. Why don't you just try emailing them (laughs) or, or going to a Lamborghini meeting or a Rolex meetup or anything like they're just, they're games, they're pseudo gambling. Instead of buying, instead of rolling a rule, instead of rolling a, spinning a roulette wheel, and choosing a number, you're you're choosing uh, you know some serial numbers loosely related to JPEGs, which may or may not still be hosted on the internet, you know. So like it's and by the way, like IPFS, maybe that saves you, maybe it doesn't. Look at what happened on Tornado Cash. How many people are able to use the IPFS on it now that everyone's blocked it? MetaMask blocked it, rather, and Fura blocked it, and uh, you know it's like. <laughs> Real distributed uh, stuff is hard to come by. And I think in the bear market, everything goes down for the most part. And, and I just, I don't think there's a world where people that overpaid for JPEGs get to survive. I think they have, to, it's just like buying crypto kitties in 2017, except instead of cats, they're uh, monkeys. The, the, cool. the difference in crypto kitties though, the utility wasn't the best and, and it was inflationary. So, you know, there was an infinite number of crypto kitties. But when you look at something like punks, uh, crypto punks, which I'm a fan of, yeah, apes, could- which... Uh, you can breed your cats together. That's more utility than the monkeys. You can't breed the monkeys together. There was actually more utility in that project. Maybe the inflation thing sucks, but to tell you the truth, the reason these things die usually isn't because of inflation. It's just because people stop caring because it's a game. They go on to the next game. Yeah, but the thing is, I, 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 would, I would step in on this. The thing about NFTs, man, is NFTs will never be inflated as long as you're in the right communities because the community hold the value, right? You know, you put 1 million copies of Call of Duty out Cool. You know, you you have a crazy amount of people that are playing Call of Duty, right? You have a 10,000 PFP collection, you know, at the average of what, four or 5K holders. So, you know, you're holding that value as a community. So I, I don't think an NFT, again, in the right one community is inflated. I think they hold exactly they? what the How holders. How right now? How down are apes right now? You stop comparing it. There's 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 ten thousand other collections out there. Quit comparing apes. I hate when people compare apes. Okay, immediately, well, pick anyone you want. I'm literally just asking you a straight legit question with like no. The angle. Le- legit I'm question curious. is they minted like, for two. They minted right for. Now. They're not down. They minted for two hundred and eighty dollars. Apes are not down. They're actually still up. Thank you very much. We measure like we talk down. Not they're not down. Lunch. Thank you very much. Right, so but, they've yes, only been around for a year. They're not down. 
Thank you very much, bro. If you uh, use that measurement, it's, thank it's you done. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just you like your silly, hex bro. coin, Stop. you know. Just like your hex coin. My, my hex down is your hex coin. X. My, with my that guy, up a thousand X, right? But we could look, make it, but, but Richard, I would, I would, you can make the same argument for 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 for, for board apes. You know, the, the price, even though corrected heavily, like Hex and any other altcoin, it's still way above the mint Richard, price. Bro, he just dodged the question. Why don't you guys just be honest? What's the so what's the, what's the, the question? I'll, I'll try. I'll try to take it. So the correction of of board apes, if you if you if you measure in in, in dollar terms was you know a lot heavier than in ETH terms, but yeah, it did correct it heavily. It's still priced at a pretty good, you know, if you look at Bitcoin or any crypto back, you know, a few years ago in 2017, we saw pretty heavy corrections of blockchains that are doing extremely well right now. I think the yeah, correction is not a, a scam. Listen, you're, you're defending it with scam tactics, okay? What you're doing right now is pretending that local tops don't exist and therefore you can never measure a dip. You can never see how the recent guys are down because it used to be so much lower. If you're going to play that game, then no one can ever talk about a dip in Bitcoin because it launched at a penny. And so now we can never talk about dips because it's up from a penny. And it's just stupid scam tactics. There's a chart. You can measure the chart. They have websites that show you the floor price. And they show you how the floor price has moved. I asked you a simple, honest question that you guys should know the answer to, which is how down are NFTs. And you're lying to my face telling me that they're Let's not look, down. Okay. Because no, they're down. They're down. No, they're down. Look, I, I down agree with you. They're high, down, but is that just like your yeah. scam coin as well? So our scam is that, NFTs are down like your scam coin. So is that <laughs> so, so, so personal? Hold on, guys. I gave my coins away for free to Bitcoin holders. They're up 250x versus Bitcoin from January 5th of 2020. They're up a thousand x against fiat. My coin ain't like your coin. My coin's amazing. So, Richard, would you would you uh, uh, JPEG. Richard? I have a, I have a quick question for you. Would you would you agree that if an asset corrects heavily, doesn't mean it's it is or isn't a scam. There's many other indicators. 100%. I agree okay. 100%. And I agree so, that Amazon dropped 95%. And I think in crypto, if you measure from the top down, you're stupid because these things usually go up and to the right. and You're smarter to measure from the bottom up. But why not just be honest and do both? Which is why I post the chart from the beginning and I show every dip and I show every pump. And that's how you really reason about these things is visually showing 20 dips and 20 pumps. And then you don't have this cherry picking lying with statistics crap that everyone does. So my next question is, I was, you know, I wasn't a supporter of NFTs when I should have been. There is 99% of NFTs are scams the same way 99% of coins back in 2017, 2018, even now are scams. Would you call, I'm not saying whether they're inflated or not, but would you say the blue chips, punks, apes, um, I'm not t talking about art, I'm talking about the PFPs. Would you say they're scams or would you say they're just inflated, but they, you do see some sort of utility? Not saying you're a fan of the utility, but you see some sort of utility. I, uh, you're muted, man. You're muted, Richard. I'm sorry. Thanks, bro. I, I don't think they're scams. I think they're collectibles. And Beanie Babies were popular. I, look, I own the world's largest diamond, but maybe people don't like diamonds anymore one day. So I paid $4 million in crypto for it. I think I got a sick deal. I would have paid twenty. I think it's a huge flex. But look, maybe one day people don't like black diamonds, or maybe they don't like diamonds at all. It is a collectible. And you're, and you're playing the game of what is the inflation rate in supply versus what is the rate that you can get new users to adopt and hold. And so just like, you know, I got to de-educate people about the silly things they think that are wrong. So for instance, people think inflation is bad. Okay, well, let's play that game. When did Bitcoin make the most gains? When its inflation was exponentially higher, doubled and doubled and doubled. When its inflation was eight times higher was when it had the sickest gains. And when has it had the limpest, weakest gains? when its inflation has been the lowest. And so I have to de-educate everybody that for some reason just can't read a chart. And, and like, it, it doesn't, like your inflation on these things isn't what matters the most. What matters the most is how quickly you're on-ramping new users and are, are those users buying and holding. In Hacks, the average staker stakes for seven years. There's been nothing like it ever in history. People get tattoos and put them on their chest. They lock their coins for 15 years, which is how you get an average of seven. When you have people putting tattoos on their chest and locking up for 15 years, guess what? It tends to push the price up. And so all these other narrative means that other coins use to try and get you to buy and hold, like, oh, the community's strong, you get to meet people, or oh, you know, whatever the meme is, like Bitcoin was going to be programmable money. No one ever programmed it. Bitcoin was going to be peer-to-peer uh, -peer digital cash, failed entirely. Those two memes went away. 
Ethereum was going to be world computer. It was going to be DAOs. Those memes went away. Now they're trying to be digital money, just like Bitcoin fell into. The memes always change, but the only thing the price chart cares about is buying and holding. And so we just directly monetize the buying and hold. You just get paid inflation so, to buy and hold. Everything else uses a meme to try and get you to do it. We just use inflation to do it. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot to the to the you know Dogecoin. We've got three supporters of Dogecoin. We've got Matt uh, Matt Wallace, which I'll let him introduce himself. We've got the Doge Pound. I will let him introduce himself as well. And we got Irina, um, all supporters of Dogecoin. Then we got Wahid, yourself, Richard, and Simon on the other side of the fence. I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, but do you want to kick it off, Richard? Your thoughts on Doge, and I'll let the guys respond. Matt, the I Doge think, I think the network is fast. The transactions are cheap. I've never heard of anyone getting scammed out of money on it. You do have the world's richest guy out there shilling it rather often. It has outperformed Bitcoin vastly as far as price performance go. So that's the upsides. And the memes are kind of funny, or at least they used to be. Now, what's the downside? There was a buy the rumor, sell the news event when uh, the day that uh, Elon went on Saturday Night Live, that was the top. And it went straight down. And then I think it went down 80, 85%. And then, uh, you know, but Bitcoin went down 75 and Ethereum went down 85 and Hex went down 95. And so, you know, when I, people talk about blue chips, it's pretty funny to me because you're like, if no one's got hacked on any of these things and they've all worked pretty well and they only drop 75, 85, 95, wouldn't you just want to buy the one that gets up the most since they're all dipping similar and you make it on the upside way more? Like we're up 250x versus Bitcoin. So like, and Doge is probably up, I don't know, 10, 20, 30x versus Bitcoin, depending on when you bought it. So here's the downsides to Doge. It's garbage technology. I, I literally developed around it. Um, it. It's trash. Their wallet's trash. Their mining network's trash. They're merged mined with uh, Litecoin, and Litecoin has lower market cap, so the incentives for security are totally upside down. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it, it was literally made in the afternoon as a joke. Now, I'm going to say that again because it's that important. The founders of it dislike it, hate it, say terrible things about it. The founders at least one of the founders, there's two. And it was made in an afternoon as a joke. And that's what it is. And it, and it has outperformed Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has been outperformed by something made in an afternoon as a joke. That's a little misleading to say though, don't you think? Because it wasn't made necessarily, it was forked. So you're saying Litecoin is terrible technology. You're saying Bitcoin is terrible technology. How can you say that? Well, I mean, just try and use it, man. Like when you use their wallet, like it's, it's not a good wallet. Like the Bitcoin core software has been upgraded a few times to be more reliable, have better features, have a more robust mining network, have a higher hash rate that's not merge mined. I mean, some of the stuff is very technical. I'm sure a lot of the users don't understand it, but you know, these technical things become real when the network fails. I think, sorry, I think when... what, what know, though is that the Dogecoin, the most recent Dogecoin update not only made the transaction fees extremely quick they also have streamlined a lot of other things with the dogecoin network and one thing that a lot of people don't even think about is that right now dogecoin's highest upside potential for its use case could be the starlink satellite network elon musk continues to say he supports dogecoin over and over and over again there's a reason why he does that and if he decides to leverage the full network of satellites across the globe to helping dogecoin as a currency and then you can do free dogecoin transactions anywhere then at that point, it's hard to aren't, argue. That aren't they already to... like free? Bro, I just like supported your coin. It said so many nice things about it. I just said like no one ever lost money using it. I said it was fast. I said it was cheap. I don't know why you're trying to check nuts on me. I'm trying to hook you up with like, you know, a, a testimonial here, bro. So what? look, weren't the fees always cheap? Wasn't the network always fast? I don't think it ever filled up. And I don't think it ever got expensive. So I don't know why you're talking about lowering fees or hiring throughput because I don't think those were ever issues. Like you're shit talking your own coin now. Stop. I, I, I like you, Richard. I, I like you, but the problem is you're saying things that aren't true extremely confidently, and uh, people will believe. Like what? That. Specifically, like, tell like, me like what, please. Trash technology. It's not trash. Trash technology. Okay. Do you know what merge mining means? Do I know what? Do you know what merge mining means? Yes. Okay. Can you please tell the audience what merge mining means so they know too? Merge mining is probably one of the least important things in all cryptocurrency. I, I think. So look, bro, you actually don't know what it means, but you try to pretend that you do. Now, I can explain it since you can't. Would you Richard, like me to? Because it's important. Else go? Richard, Richard. I asked him a question, he let dodged it. I'm going to sit here silent and let him try and answer it again. Please describe let merge mining to me. It, it's basically, I mean, it's, it's in the name. It's 
when you do cryptocurrencies at the same time, it's not necessarily that important. You don't need merge mining in cryptocurrency. And yes, I, I get it. It's Litecoin, Dogecoin. You're trying to make reference there. I, I'm I'm fully understanding where you're going with this. But at the same time, there's not really anyone who cares that much about that. People will see the low fees. It's not going to be that important if your fees one penny or one tenth of a penny. No one cares. So I don't think it really matters. So, so can we just admit that the dude dodged answering the question? Was so, more so how would you? So how would you? It? How would you explain it, Richard? And how does it impact on whether Dogecoin is is you know has utility or whether it's sustainable? Sure. Here you go. Dogecoin doesn't have enough miners on its own to do its own proof of work mining. So it sucks the D of Litecoin and relies on Litecoin miners to mine Litecoin blocks in order to occasionally, if they update their software often enough, also out of the kindness of their hearts, do some mining for Dogecoin as well. And if Litecoin's value gets low enough, then there aren't enough Litecoin miners, and then there's not enough hash rate to defend the Dogecoin network. And so the economics are upside down because you don't have your own miners, you suck Litecoin D. But since you didn't even know how merge mining worked, I but probably how, how, figured why you don't that, know about this attack vector. So, so because if, you're if using... Litecoin's value drops low enough, people will 51% attack Dogecoin because I'm a genius and know what I'm talking about. And everyone else on the panel seems to be a little bit lightheaded. Okay, guys, I think I need to, I need to, um, I, I need to get some uh, <laughs> positive it energy here. Like... First of all, we are... go ahead. Maybe, maybe just Google merge mining next time, so you know. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Irina. Go ahead. Go ahead, Irina. Go ahead. Yep. Guys, let's um, let's start from the very beginning. What are we debating? We're debating Dogecoin. <laughs> what, but what's the what are we debating? Debate uh, uh, Dogecoin is a meme coin. Shall we all agree on that? Yes. Was it created as a joke? Yes. Um, is the richest man in the world pumping it uh, on his Twitter because he's got large bags? Yes. Now, the problem is, what's the problem? I don't see what's the problem. The only problem is if um, we have, let's say, naive or not very experienced investors coming in and trying to put their money into Dogecoin, believing in that it's somehow better than Bitcoin, that's the problem. But otherwise, if you're putting in, you know, 50 bucks as a joke into a meme coin because you like the, the, the you like community and the memes are cool, like I like Matt and I love his community and I we hang out and we make jokes and you know what is wrong with the Dogecoin as a principle I don't see anything wrong you want to know what's wrong with it I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with it please people are putting their life savings into a joke that has very little development and relies on the price of Litecoin for its security model and furthermore we have real innovation in cryptocurrency like on-chain exchange where you don't have to lose your money when the exchange jacks you so Hotbit just turned off their website. Hotbit just turned off deposits and withdrawals. Hotbit appears to be exit scamming. And guess where people have to go to trade their Dogecoin? They have to suck middleman D. They have to beg and pray that these exchanges give them their coins when they send them there to trade them for something else. But in Ethereum, you don't have to use these middlemen. You don't have to take counterparty risk. You can trade peer to peer with only smart contract risk, no middlemen, no counterparty risk. That's innovation. You wanna get a stable coin, de-risk from Dogecoin, you gotta go through a middleman again. But in Ethereum, you don't. And so we have better technology, EVM technology with stable coins on it, an on-chain exchange where you don't have to use middlemen or rely on Litecoin for your security, which has a very low hash rate to start with. But you guys are okay with a funny meme and you're willing to risk your life savings on it and better technology oh, exists. Well, so, yeah, or first rely all, on Twitter posts all, to pump your bags or inflate your bags, deflate your first, bags, you know? First of all, I never <laughs> said that uh, Dogecoin is the best technology. First of all, I never said that. It would be stupid of me to say that. It's Secondly, the best, I think, the best. So, so Matt, Matt I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I'll, Matt, I'll give you the mic in a, right after Irina as well, and I'll, I'll probably ask, ask you a question that will, will you know, be, will be pretty relevant. But Irina, go ahead. And secondly, I did say that it is horrible where people yolo their life savings into a meme coin. Absolutely. Whether it's under false understanding, whether it's because somebody misled them, whether it's because they're thinking Dogecoin is somehow superior to everything in the world. Absolutely. But if you 
um, you know, throw 30, 300 bucks into Dogecoin. That's the money you can afford to lose. And and um, you like being part of the community. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're being part of this, you know, this meme community for, for a, a proper reason. Not because it's the best technology or not because you're planning to, to, to make your life savings on that. I personally made shitloads of money on Dogecoin. But... I can afford to lose money. I can afford. So those who can't should not putting their money neither into Dogecoin, neither into Bitcoin. Not, uh, they should probably, you know, stay safer in fiat. You know, we're talking about, you know, pensioners who are about to get retired. We're talking about your college, um, uh, college funds for kids. So, I mean... You know, you know, you guys love the environment, right? Like, you know, your proof of work. Like, the reason Elon doesn't accept Bitcoin for cars anymore is because it's bad for the environment. You know, your proof of work coin that nukes the environment too. And the more valuable your coin is, or the more valuable Litecoin is, the more you harm the environment. Why don't you upgrade to proof of stake? Why don't you become an ERC twenty? Why don't you have on chain exchange? Like, there's such a better world available to you, and you guys are never going to get there because you don't even understand the technology. You just who, bought a meme. Who, Richard, Richard, I have a, guys? I have a. Who are you uh, guys? Let's uh, let's. No, he means he means yeah he he means Dogecoin supporters. Richard, I have a question for you. If there is utility, I'm not saying there is. I'm not saying there isn't. If there is utility to Dogecoin, would that change the argument? I, no, like I think it serves its purpose. People do it because it's fun. Hopefully they don't get wrecked. It's nobody lost any money on it from a network perspective yet. It's cheap. It's fast. I'm okay with all that stuff. But it's it's there's just better stuff. There's stuff with better gains, better uptime, better features, and even better memes. So like I just, you know, I'm I'm being as nice as I can to it. Truthfully, like I'm being. I, I don't know of anyone else that's as nice as Do to Dogecoin as I am. Like I'm I'm being very nice. So we did we did it we did a poll just now, and Matt, I'll give you the mic. We did a poll just now. Uh, we've had a few hundred votes already. 70%, 60% love Dogecoin, 32% don't, and 7 don't know what it is. I mean, uh, we the have fake Dogecoin ship murdered Doge's gains, and it was just Doge on Ethereum. So, like, Would you, I mean... Okay, so, so Matt, Matt, do you want to go through points, just point by point? What are the... What's the utility of Dogecoin? Maybe that's a good first question, and I'm not anti-Dogecoin. I'm split. I think that the you know the community could build utility. I know it doesn't tick a lot of the boxes, and I'm not an investor in Dogecoin. But I think the community is a good example. It's a good experiment on the community building utility and growing the, the the ecosystem. What's the current utility to Dogecoin, and what are you guys working towards? What's the utility you're working towards? That's, that's a good question. I love the poll there. So seventy percent uh, seem seem to know what's going on here, but. I'm sorry, Richard, I'm going to have to destroy you a little bit here. I don't want to do this, but I, I, you've left me with no choice. So, Richard, right now there are 1,000... ...the U.S., 19%, 13%, 5% in France. And uh, so we're looking at that compared to... So, is it me? Uh, he's yeah, he is. He is. Matt, Matt, are you there, Matt? I can't hear yeah. him. He's, gonna do he's breaking up. Matt, can you there? I want to stray. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Let's, let's give, give him. Yeah, yeah. Just, just give him. Yeah. Matt, you gotta, you gotta. I'm actually, I'm actually waiting for this too. I'm, I'm in. Hey, what's up, David? What's up, man? I know you and Richard had a great interview. I was listening to it. But Matt, let's just let's just see Matt's connection if we can fix it. Matt, are you there? All right. So, so Romy, if you can just DM Matt and have him. <laughs> Him. Yeah, so, so uh, Romy, if you can DM Matt and, and have him fit. Uh, Matt, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you yeah, cool, Michael. Yeah, it seems good now, yeah. and I'll let you stop it. Can you start again? What's the utility? Or you said you're going to destroy Richard. We'd love you to go through your points. Richard's going to give you time to go through them and respond. Yes, yes. So what I was saying is that I hate to do this, Richard. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to destroy you, <laughs> Peter. And, Sorry about this in advance. So the, the, the way I'm going to do this is first start off by saying right now Litecoin has 1,112 nodes currently mining it compared to Dogecoin, which has over 5,000 nodes mining. So Dogecoin, not at all reliant on Litecoin, not even a little bit. Significantly larger market cap. And it's really not even particularly close when it comes to Dogecoin and Litecoin in comparison and so really Litecoin is actually more dependent on Dogecoin at this point than anything else. Then second of all, oh man, is, is, this, is this somehow working? I, I admit... Fuck. You're, you're choppy again, Matt. Man, it's not going to work if you're choppy. You're not gonna be... so odd. What's odd? 
Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can, we can. Yeah, it chopped up. I heard the first point about uh, uh, Litecoin depending on Dogecoin and, and the number of Dogecoin nodes. I'll let you continue. What's the second point, man? Man, you can't <laughs> so, destroy nobody. We can't hear you. Uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate. <laughs> okay, we can hear you now. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, man, we can. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here, here, here's the problem. I'm actually at, at my, rent, my first rental property that I purchased, and uh, they're doing construction downstairs and using up a large amount of electricity, I imagine. I don't know what, what the deal is. But anyway, I can't be down there because it's too loud, and that's where the strongest internet connection is. So <laughs> it's, it's a little bit difficult, but, you know, it's what it is. Uh, man, we can hear you fine now. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I believe they stopped doing stuff down there. So that's the first point, that Dogecoin has significantly more miners than Litecoin currently running, more nodes on the network. You can go look at the Dogecoin node map right now if you want to, and I only think that will increase even more. Elon Musk, he has the ability to buy a crazy amount of nodes and start running them anytime he wants. And then he could burn off that Dogecoin. That would be really cool. That's one potential high upside use case with Dogecoin. Then we move on further. And Dogecoin, you clearly see it's the greatest technology of all time once you realize that uh, you, can, you can buy stuff with it on the Tesla website. What other cryptocurrency can you buy things with? Nothing. Richard's right, they stopped accepting Bitcoin at Tesla, but they're still accepting Doge. And I believe they will accept it store-wide. But then you could argue, well, then they can't sell it though, right? Because Elon Musk would never want to sell Dogecoin. Well, then here's where you're wrong about that. They can use it for things. Like, for example, they can use it to pay employees in Dogecoin. Now, here's why it's the greatest technology of all time. Employees would love to accept Dogecoin. Employees may not like as much to accept any other cryptocurrency. And so there's the biggest use case for it. Companies can accept it and pay employees who choose to accept that in that currency. So there, boom, we finally have a currency that any company can accept and spend without having to sell um, a, a large amount of it. So I think it's hard to beat that. And Dogecoin is the future cryptocurrency versus greatest technology of all time. Okay, so so before you answer, I know Richard, I, I know, I know, I know what you're gonna say, Richard. Well, he, I'll let you go before Richard. But just to summarize what you said, Matt, the point about the nodes was point number one. Point number two was, you know, Dogecoin's utility as a as a as a, as a form of transferring value, and the, one of the first use cases is Tesla. And then the utility you guys are working towards is Dogecoin acting as a medium of exchange. Is that correct? Is that what Dogecoin is, is you know, they, I think you guys called it the people's coin. So would you say medium of exchanges would be the main utility of Dogecoin beyond the community? Yeah, I think it's, it's easy to say. It's easy to say that's probably going to be the main utility. But beyond that, there's also a, a really smart group that is currently working on Dogecoin technology in terms of smart contracts integration they're working on a huge network of use cases beyond just spending that is about to roll out very 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 soon here and will allow people to go from dogecoin through a secondary layer to literally anything in the world and so it can be used for that very soon just like ethereum there's really no downside to dogecoin the be and the best upside is that a lot of people love to judge it and uh, un and underrate it which is why the market cap is so low and such a beautiful price to get in right now okay so so richard is fixing his connection he'll be back in a bit wahid the mic is yours and i think david you want to jump into richard left he couldn't handle the heat he got out no, he's, no, no, he, yeah, he's coming back he, the ambus, he, he's he's coming back well done <laughs> Yeah, he's coming back. He's <laughs> uh, Wahid, go ahead, man. All right. Okay. Look, um, I can't help but but really approach this from my uh, point of view, which is, again, longevity, private equity, long-term thinking. I, so, again, apologies uh, if I sound ignorant on the intricacies of what you guys are talking about. Uh, but I, I want to say a few things, which is that, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, we are structurally short uh, assets and risk. We have structural inflation. And I don't mean the shit that everyone's talking about the last two, three months. I'm talking about the huge amount of debt. So this is serious stuff. So we need to give people a tool where they can outperform structural inflation in order for them to literally afford food, make money, and have a, and have a livelihood. So for me, this is serious stuff. That pivots to my second point, which is that, uh, you know, I've been investing my whole life. Uh, that spans more than 30 years of investing uh, history. And I got to tell you, my best performing um, company has been Philip Morris. And I previewed that in the last show, et cetera. And I always like to talk about Philip Morris, a very old, stodgy, non-mean, boring company, uh, tobacco company, because it's actually the best performing stock in the world in the last 50, 40, 
30 and 20 years on a rolling period, but never less than 20 years. Meaning there's always something really cool in the short term that outperforms it. But over the long term, how you make money, folks, and this is going to get to the point of Dogecoin, is you want serial compounding. You want a business or a crypto with utility that every single day is printing money, every single day is, is, is actually creating value uh, in order for you to outperform inflation, outperform all the money printing, outperform everything. So when I got into the blockchain, I brought that mentality because that's the only mentality I know, which is the kind of blockchain crypto projects that I want to support or invest in or even create, but forget the creation for a second because I'm not showing, are ones where every single day value is being created, money is being produced, so that even if the chart, like Richard said, goes down a lot, who gives a shit? Because over time, you'll just keep compounding and compounding and compounding. So that brings me to Dogecoin. The reason why I do not like Dogecoin, uh, uh, even though I feel somewhat ignorant, is because no one has truly told me how it compounds value. I cannot invest in something based on a meme, and maybe that's my weakness, or based on an Elon Musk. Maybe he'll push it, maybe he won't. He seems to be having a lot of fun with it. If I want to bet on Elon Musk, I'll back Tesla, SpaceX. There's many things where he sleeps on the floor where I want him involved in, okay? He sleeps on Tesla floors. He, he, he is 100% dedicated to making SpaceX uh, uh, successful. He is not 100% uh, 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 fixated on Dogecoin. It is a hobby. It is fun. And a payment mechanism, uh, there are lots of payment mechanisms, uh, lots of tokens in the future are going to be used to buy real stuff. In our world, it's fashion. In other worlds, it's art, etc. So my only rebuttal to the very kind people pushing Dogecoin is very simple. If you have so many other options to make wealth, to make money, why choose this path when you have so many things that create utility? I'm and not I think it's going to go down, but why this? I will answer that with your own words. You said yourself, it is fun, it is miming, it is the community, it is entertainment. And don't forget, entertainment is the highest, uh, as, um, you know, the, 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 the largest segment when it comes to uh, uh, economy, right? Your cinemas, your Netflix, et cetera, et cetera. It's entertainment. And again, I'm not pushing Dogecoin. I'm calling it for what it is. It's a fun meme coin it's a great fun community it's entertainment w but would you so, so, and so and and yeah and we've done a better job uh than any bitcoin maxi uh at actually driving people into bitcoin which is fact if you look at the numbers more people join bitcoin from dogecoin because in 2021 when the whole meme economy blew up uh you had a bunch of people who obviously were or had a bitter taste in their mouths from listening to Maxis all day, go into the Dogecoin community, get into Dogecoin, and then two or three weeks later, get into Bitcoin because the community, because it's fun, uh, would explain Bitcoin to them uh, in layman's terms without screaming or toxicity. And these people will understand, oh shit, I can buy Bitcoin at a fraction. That's great. And they would go and but, get themselves but $20, am I right $50 or $100 worth. So am I right to believe, there you go, you said it. Am I right, and I think we actually, and this is bad for the debate, we might actually agree. But would you say that Dogecoin is not an investment? It's play of money. That not. sounds like it's play of money. Not. It's not an investment for okay, sure. Right. It's, so I, it's, think, uh, I think we won the debate. Like? It's not an investment. Right? Well, I, 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 I guess I'm I ripping guess. you guys a little bit. I'm having fun here. But you know what well, I mean? I guess Sorry. if you went and got it when it was under a penny, and it went up to 74 cents. Uh, I don't know who would, uh, somebody who would exit close to the top. I think they would disagree with you in terms of investment. I, At some point it was, I could have uh, gone to Chicago and bought more, that lottery or, ticket last week and got a Well, I mean, everything essentially in this space is a lottery ticket. If you actually look at everything uh, from this what it is, is what I disagree. I disagree with that. We are not okay. lottery tickets. You All right. So tell me what, tell me what isn't a lottery money. ticket. A, a grinding stock, a grinding a company. Grinding well, we're not talking about stocks here, though. We're talking no, about... No, no, no. I'm, I'm getting a grinding crypto project that grinds, that every single day looks to create value. Which so one is, Which one is that? Well, I... Uh, 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 without chilling, let me tell you that I have not yet achieved this, but I'm very, very vested in achieving that. 
So it's the so only way I can your own, You're talking about your own token. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm about... saying I haven't reached it. How about that? I, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then tell uh, me Ethereum, what in this Ethereum. Thing? Ethereum creates value every day because I could not build okay. my fashion company without Ethereum. But it's still speculative. Like everything we uh, in this space is still based on speculation. I would say a balance. Uh, would I say a balance between speculation and utility and fundamental exactly. value? I think everything, exactly. everything is speculative, but some things are more speculative than others. A, a Shiba Inu is more speculative, speculative than Ethereum or than um, uh, uh, you know Solana or, or Bitcoin. I won't, I won't say Bitcoin because I know that's you know very polarizing right now. Um, but Richard, okay. so. The, the point that so David make your point and then Richard you can answer David's point along with Matt's let previous me just points. My thought because I had the thing. Marianne, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You... I'm I'm not talking about my project. I will tell you my aspiration because it's the only way I can talk about it. Which is that every single day you create value, you take a take rate from in our case, for instance, uh, bringing independent designers to the business of fashion, both physical and digital. And if you do that every single day, you're a tortoise. Over time, you create value. No different to Philip Morris which no one ever gets right. No one can guess that that's the best performing stock in the last 50, 40, 30, and 20 years, but never less than 20. It's I'm sorry, are you trying to say that Philip Morris created value? Uh, without going woke, unfortunately, the st I'm talking about stock price performance, I'm talking about value creation. Don't shoot exactly. the messenger, Va I don't value. smoke, I don't value. hate it, but I'll tell you, they have 80% gross margins. So yes, they've compounded more growth. Just talking, value. talking monetary value arena. Just yeah, to be yeah. clear, more, I, I, know. I hate Philip Morris as a as a Absolutely. principal. And I'm not but a Let's let's think about the monetary value. How much uh, governments are having to spend to look after people dying of cancer? I mean, monetary value have to be looked at in uh, not in the but overall right so i would argue with you there and I, like that's i think that's completely missing the point of monetary value sorry i'm so i uh, go uh, so yeah, richard, you know, I, go ahead, richard. I you i'm in, I I'm in bitboy crypto studio right now I agree so i have to run to go hang out with my man and i just want to finalize this thing with one statement games are fun until they're not, and then people stop playing them. If you want to play with meme coins, people be launching meme coins on with Pulse in their name all the time. Somebody launched a Pulse Dogecoin. It went up like, I don't know, 10x over the last couple like weeks. So if you're into memes and you like pictures of dogs, there's a Pulse Dogecoin. And there's going to be tons and tons of more because literally I'd rather have dog coins on ERC-20s that have perfect flawless operation with huge amounts of hash rate. I went and looked it up how much hash rate there is on LTC plus Dogecoin, and it's only 500 terahash. Ethereum's got, I don't know, a thousand times that hash rate. So if you want more secure, you want on-chain exchange, you want stable coins, you want time deposit, you might as well take your meme pictures and go ahead and do Pulse Doge on, uh, and go look at the price chart and go do that on the Ethereum network. It's more safe. It's more secure. These guys don't even know nothing about technology, and Elon don't care about his technology. Elon's saying stupid stuff like less than true of the throughput. Throughput's fine. Let's lower the fees. Fees are fine. What you like, what you guys just need is more people to buy your bags. You don't even need better technology. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. I'm, I'm going to give you all a bunch of free coins. Uh, if you go to PulseChain.com, this is the world's largest airdrop. You can go play with your coins right now for free. You can go not get wrecked in the bear market, not trying to chase in the bear market, getting wrecked. Just go play with your free coins on the test net. I'll see you later, guys. Ciao. Thanks for.